Lightning Fast VCR Repair, this is Mike, how can I help you? What? No, get lost. Go fuck yourself, I paid my bill. Paddleton is a movie you haven't seen. It's on Netflix. And you say, oh, where on Netflix? I don't see it in any of the thumbnails. All I see is The Office, over and over and over. All right, Ray Romano has had a bit of a renaissance. Yeah. A Romanaissance. So uh, that's the reason we're talking about this movie. You just wanted to make that one joke. I did. If there's anyone who is who is born to do mumblecore, <laughs> it's Ray Romano. <laughs> they should tell some of the homeless about that. <laughs> Jesus, it just comes out. Oh my God. Um, it's the most horrendous thing you've ever said in the last <laughs> five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed into my own coffee. <laughs> they don't go over the top. They don't go Joe Swanberg, where you want to punch your TV screen <laughs> and go, wait, it ended? What the fuck happened? Nothing? The, the camera would move out of the, like, the restaurant that they're in, and there would be a guy like paying his parking meter. <laughs> and, and then he, he would just like look at the camera, and then it would end. Yeah. Would, what was the parking meter all about? I don't know. <laughs> Most reasonable people with, with a good sense of taste w would watch um, uh, Paddleton and get something out of it yeah. on an emotional level, on a movie level. But if Paddleton played in theaters, uh, Mr. Spielberg, in theaters <laughs> and with a wide release, yeah. it would tank. Exactly. It would sink like the fucking Titanic. Is that movie theaters, uh, they, they need to put the seats on hydraulics now and because they're, they're, they're basically amusement park rides yes. for big movies, which is fine because I would have gone insane watching Paddleton in a theater with someone crinkling a fucking rapper in my ear. Yeah. I don't care if someone's crinkling a rapper during Avengers Endgame because it's just gonna be a bunch of noise and punch <laughs> panels. If, if, if the free market economy will teach you anything is people do not go out and seek products. It's very rare, mm -hmm. um, unless it's for erectile dysfunction, or, or, or it's cocaine, or you know, it's something like that. So when Thanos comes out, we're reviewing six direct-to-video Netflix cancer dramas. <laughs> Get Out is very, I don't wanna say it's on the nose, because I actually like that movie quite a bit. It's not like, I think when we talked about it, I just compared it to like late George Romero movies, and those are how like, are like, boom. It's a little on get the it, nose. Get it. Spoilers. Spoilers from here on out until the, the, the end of the show. Fuck it. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> there, there'll be some asshole on the internet who goes 100 million things wrong with us. Ding. First of all, how did they get all those uniforms? Ding. Second of all, I will take his films over a truth or dare or over <laughs> even to, at this point like a conjuring kind of movie where it's like a, there's a demon in, in the house and it's gonna yeah. throw you against the wall eh, i'm just like sick of that they're from like a different perspective almost a, no, for, yeah. of horror and yeah. and that's refreshing we get in the very first shot of the film we see a vhs copy of chud uh, cannibalistic human underground dwellers mm -hmm. starring the guy from home alone Macaulay Culkin. Yes. How big was Merlin's magical castle? <laughs> you know, and they said, she asked, that, that was the secret entrance to the government laboratory that is underneath the entirety of the United States. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Will there be complimentary donuts after the screening? <laughs> Some elderly was yelling the Hands Across America thing because I remember that shit, because I did that shit. Oh my God. Uh, and I have, I have a lovely little story to tell. Okay. Um, uh, we're doing Hands Across America. Put a quarter in the bucket, and we're gonna stand here and hold hands with a bunch of strangers down the sidewalk. And I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> I'm like, what? I, I learned many lessons that day as, as a wee lad. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is the dumbest thing in the world because this isn't gonna do anything. Yeah. This is just some kind of showy thing. And people are still hungry, so it didn't solve any fucking problems. Um, out of nowhere, a kind of a guy in like dirty jeans, and he had—I remember—he had long, dirty hair and a big like handlebar mustache. He's like, he's like, he comes out into the middle of the street and goes, "Okay, okay, here's what we're gonna do, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna need everybody to come on out this way. Uh, we're moving the line. We're moving the line, everybody." And and and, and I'm like, "What?" And so everybody goes out into the middle of the street. And then the guy runs away and traffic starts coming. 
and everybody scatters. <laughs> and, and, and that was the day I, I learned to avoid groupthink. <laughs> I will, I will take uh, overly ambitious but sloppy over uh, the, the Conjuring 5 any day of the week. <laughs> but what about Wish Upon? Well, I mean, nothing's going to top Wish Upon. This is no, this is no Wish this Upon. This is no Wish Upon. By the way, Joe Pilato died today. I know. That's sad. Have I told you my Joe Pilato story? <laughs> uh, 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 R.I.P. Joe Pilato, you brought us many minutes of joy in cinema. <laughs> Mainly this one. I'm running this monkey farm now, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the fuck you're doing with my time! Mike, what, what did you just do that for? I thought I'd do the tomato soup test from the Rocketeer. The rock of who the note rises to the surface of the soup bowl, letting Neville Sinclair know about the deception. So we'll see if the note actually floats to the surface of the soup. I can totally understand why a younger person today would not get it. Because our, our standards now of what action is are so totally different. I get chills watching this movie many, many times, which I can rarely say. Now, as elderly, middle-aged white men, we get all the humor, and it, it kind of appeals to us. When it came out, there was probably a couple of dads in the audience that went, yeah, hey, that's pretty, uh, that's good. And the kids are like, we're bored. I want to watch Space Jam. Well, there's also when it came out, there was this there's, there's like three summers in a row, like the summer of 89 through like the summer of like 91. This was 91. Yeah, the, the, the biggest f movies ever made just came out every f summer, one on top of the other, from f Indiana Jones, the Ghostbusters 2. Batman. Terminator 2 came out the same summer that the Rocketeer did. His heroic spirit is first demonstrated when he punches the FBI agent in the face. <laughs> and then you're like, this guy, He's got some spunk, you know what I mean? <laughs> Nowadays, it's kind of frowned upon when you hit a federal officer in the face. It, it, it was a different time. That flyboy hangs with on my kisser and you let him waltz? Maybe you had it coming. <laughs> Page 10 of the, of the script, 10 minutes into the film, discovery of the rocket pack. Which also includes one of my favorite lines ever, which I still quote to today. And it's acting is acting like you're not acting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my prince, with that you drink of my lips as deeply. Cut, cut, cut. Who got the part over Jenny, who was much better. Yes, but. But, but they're making a comment about like. Nepotism. Wait, wait, nepotism, or they're just way ahead of the Me Too thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's the producer's niece. Oh, is that it? Okay. Yeah. Jenny gets a Me Too'd by W.C. Fields. It's W.C. Fields. Oh, charms, my dear. Doubly charm. Hey, you got a great set of knockers on you. It's a wonderful visual metaphor for the fact that Neville Sinclair is basically a fraud and there is a front. Uh -huh. He is a fake set, right? <laughs> he, he, is not, he is not who he appears to be. You have this grand set, this castle, and he's this swashbuckler. And all Cliff does is just sort of lean on it and it falls over. Mm -hmm. It's just, just a wonderful little touch. But that helmet is just the most perfect art deco thing in existence. And that's a whole nother topic is Rich. I know you have a love for art deco. I, I do. I have an unnatural love for art deco. At the end, they end up at uh, Griffith Observatory, which is an art deco paradise as well. <laughs> just the whole scene where we discover he's a Nazi, that is just the best payoff for Jenny's character arc. She wants, she wants to be the big Hollywood actress. She wants to play a, a scene with you know, the big actor, Neville Sinclair, oh, I auditioned for that part. And that, that whole scene with them, they're both acting. She finally gets her scene with the big actor. And she literally says that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I finally played a scene with Neville Sinclair. They, they didn't need to hit us over the head, but it was there. It's funny you mention that, because there's a lot of hitting over the head <laughs> with things. <laughs> we 
We had, we had people like Charles Lindbergh who were just flat out like pro-Hitler. Right. And they go to see a Neville Sinclair film in the theater, and before that is a newsreel. Herr Hitler assures the Western powers he is not massing troops at the Czech border. About Hitler's goodwill tour with his Zeppelins, which was real. They yeah. had Zeppelins. That was what the, the Hindenburg was. Yeah. Instead of just ending the film where Nazis like come out of the bushes, a fucking Zeppelin comes out of nowhere. <laughs> it's set up. It's properly set up. It's flying from New York to Chicago and then making its final stop in Los Angeles. And Cliff's like, yeah, right, world peace tour. More like peace of the world tour. And it's like, okay. Right. You want, Cliff you want... knows Nazis are bad. You know who else is great in this movie? John Hughes, or Terry, Terry Quinn is John Hughes. Because at the same time- Howard Hughes. Huh? Jo John oh, Hughes directed The Breakfast right. Club. At, at the same time, you get that, that, uh, that wonderful scene with, with Howard Hughes, played by uh, Terry Quinn. Terry O'Quinn. Uh, O'Quinn. Terry O'Quinn? Cut, cut, cut! Valentine, you know, he, he switched sides at the end. He's fighting against the Nazis. And there's just this little moment where he's shooting at the guns and he looks over and he realizes that him and the FBI, they're both working together, fighting the Nazis. It's just a little thing like, aha, we're on the same side now. Maybe not, look. Kid. It's the best hero shot of all time. Yeah. We awkwardly share a house together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about that. Uh, <laughs> threw in a case of the not gays. Yeah. It's yeah. 1991, you know. Yeah. I doubt PV and people would have thought PV and Cliff were lovers, but I'm, I'm, I'm bathing in, in warm, non-existent nostalgia over the sequel. <laughs> Four years later. It opens with B-52 bombers, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Cliff Secord on a rocket, <laughs> shooting past them. They're making a Rocketeer sequel or a reboot, and it's going to be a black woman as the Rocketeer. Yeah. And then I'm like, personally, I love this idea, and, and I'm going to get into it. <laughs> Um, because it got my brain going on all, all sorts of different different things. Uh, I have a feeling how this occurred. Do you, do you know how clickbait happens? I know what it is. I, uh... Here's how it happened. Okay. At some random moment, uh, a press junket was happening, right? Uh -huh. And uh, it was Jennifer Connelly or Bill Campbell or uh, who, whoever was sitting in a press junket for some other movie that they just made. And the interviewer said, you remember you were in The Rocketeer? Yes. What if they remade The Rocketeer and they put uh, a, a, a woman in the role, specifically a minority woman? Would you be okay with that? Then they say, that's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. I think diversity is wonderful and important nowadays. No one's gonna say, nah, it should be a white guy. <laughs> so the second Jennifer Connelly or, or, or Bill Campbell or, or Alan Arkin or, Joe Johnston, or anyone says, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be great, yeah. What's the next question? <laughs> Joe Johnston confirms Rocketeer's sequel starring black woman. Then someone writes an article. Uh -huh. Someone comes up with some fucking conceptual art and it gets posted on a comicbookmovie.com. It gets on Twitter. They're making a Rocketeer sequel starring a black lady. Gazorbo.com. Gazorbo.com, yes. <laughs> what are the comments? It shouldn't be a minority lady! And everyone's screaming and blah, 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 and then someone makes money off clicks. <laughs> a black lady is the rocketeer. She needs an afro. Uh -huh. This needs to take place in the 70s because you still have that bygone era. It can't take place nowadays. I'm going 1977. Okay. Uh, New York City, uh, the, the famous Summer of Sam. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the year Star Wars came out, it's the year Elvis died. Uh, it, there was a, a famous uh, heat wave in New York City. PV and Howard Hughes built a new prototype that's maybe has some, some little changes to it. When did Howard Hughes die? That's the wonderful thing. Howard Hughes died in 1976. Oh my God. I looked it up. Oh my God, that's perfect. I'm just picturing like just a totally different style of movie. Oh yeah. Not not World War II with Cliff Secord running around, but totally different character, 
totally different setting, totally a different time era. And I picture a scene where the woman walks into Studio 54 <laughs> and it's like, and she's, she's, she's got her full Rocketeer costume on. She takes, she takes off her helmet, uh -huh. <laughs> Afro comes out <laughs> and she's looking around and then she walks past like Andy Warhol and he's like, ooh, what is that beautiful work of art on your back, honey? <laughs> I just like crazy New York City art scene in 1977 and I think there was a power outage, a famous blackout. Father was a Tuskegee Airman. She wants to learn how to fly, but they say you can't. Yeah. No, no, no. You're, you're a black, woman. You're a black woman. You're a black woman. You can't. You can't, you can't fly. You can't. You can't join our elite airfield, you know, pilots training program. You, you just, you just don't have it, lady. <sighs> to the top of the Chrysler Building. <sighs> to, to the penthouse of the rich white villain. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Not an actual black exploitation film, but just in flavoring. The, Flavoring and in the style of because that was the era of the black exploitation film. Well, Rich, it's time to check in on our tomato soup test. Did Cliff Secord's note float to the surface? No. Oh, now the movie sucks. Hey, Jay, you know, last episode, a lot of people were asking about that red spot on your shirt. What gives? Oh, it's actually a really funny story. Ooh. Ad break. Ooh. Ad break. Ooh. Well, me personally, I loved it. Marvel movies are like a cake, where the cake part is the movie taking itself seriously, and there's a nice icing on top of humor. Sure. And Shazam is kind of inverted, where there's an icing on top of the seriousness of what's happening, but the, the, the bulk of the movie is a lighthearted comedy. Sure. And an adventure film, basically. Yeah. That cape he has, <laughs> it looks like, like grandma's drape. It's so, it's so awesome yeah. how, how they left it the whole time. Uh, something, whatever the hero's name was. Billy. Billy, oh, Billy, uh, Billy Peltzer. <laughs> uh, Bill, Billy Zane. Billy, Billy Barty, his Billy, name was Billy Barty. Billy Barty. Yeah, um, that was Billy Barty. It's a, it's a much better film about family than yeah. Star Wars The Last Jedi, which is not about family. What is The Last Jedi about? It's about uh, a woke lady with pink hair ramming <laughs> a spaceship into a Star Destroyer. <laughs> he didn't have that moment where he's going, the kids at school are making fun of me because I'm so fat. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a meme. You just take that. <laughs> just take that. Okay. Just cut that right out. Um, Mr. Wood, Superman's head isn't in frame. <laughs> Nobody will notice. Nobody will notice. It's the costume that they'll see. <laughs> Don't you want to tilt the camera up, Mr. Wood? <laughs> oh, they tilt the camera up and, and Superman's going like this with the tape. <laughs> That's actually David F. Sandberg's chiropractor. He kind of looks a little like Henry Cavill if he covers his face. They start drinking it and I, and I heard a mom go, oh no, with, with kids over. Because yeah, you see the little kid drinking yeah. a beer. And I was yeah. like, they did that in 2019? <laughs> It's refreshing to see things where it's not like all the edges are completely sanded off. Like, not that this is an edgy movie, but... That's why they call him David Sandberg. <laughs> that was a quality, quality joke. I'm just, but you see, I'm pretty fast. Yeah. I'm fast. What are we talking about? There was plenty of kids in the theater we saw it that were clapping. Right. It's okay for kids to clap in a movie. It's adults. Knock that shit off. Not my Shazam. <laughs> not my sh hashtag. Not my Shazam. Right, right. Shazam should be fucking ripping people's heads off and smoking. <laughs> we drank that beer. He should have chugged the beer and then threw the bottle at some bitch's head. Oh, 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 oh. Jay, you've encapsulated the DC fanboy perfectly. <laughs> oh, Jay, you were gonna tell me about that red stain on your shirt. Oh yeah. Ad break. No one's ever really gone. Yeah! No one's ever really gone. No one's ever really gone. I'm here! 
That's all right. No one's ever really gone. It's okay, Luke. No one's ever really gone. I took it upon myself to train him as a Jedi. I was wrong. Don't worry, Luke. No one's ever really gone. Oh my god! Oh, it's okay, because no one's ever really gone. Oh no, not Qui-Gon! Qui-Gon? Oh, oh wait, I guess nobody's ever really gone. There, there, Fatso. No monster is ever really gone. Even people that are really gone aren't really gone. Oh my god! Well, it's alright, because no one's ever really gone. Oh no. No one's ever really- oh wait. Oh! Ouch! Nobody's ever really gone. Don't cry, Jin Erso. Your father's coming back! Oh god, that guy just fell in the Sarlacc pit monster, but nobody's ever really gone. Wait, wait, wait Obi-Wan, no, he's not really gone. D uh, don't walk away, cut his head off or something, he's not really gone. You, Cause nobody's ever really gone. Boom! Hey, quit cheering everybody. Even things are never really gone. No one's ever really gone. Goo goo magoo goo. Where the green beret becomes the prey. Written by Dr. Seuss. Brian Cranston? Look how young he looks. Light of fuck. Silent trigger. The trigger usually is silent. It's the gun part that's lost. Raven tits. Is that Coolio? <laughs> Dragon cunt. <laughs> Badass showdown. No doubt a David Dakota film. Ted Diabetes and Marine 2. The Unreadables. <laughs> ass, ass in. Richard Grieco in. Final paycheck. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Yay! Who killed Captain Alex? By Wakaliwood. Fatal justice. <laughs> A dollar? How dare you? Oh god. Will it never go away? Will it ever go away? God damn it. Just get out of my life. Hervigan Flaggers. The Raven Files. <laughs> Virus, the Charlie Sheen story. Oh God, Ben Kingsley and Gillian Anderson. Did you have a couple weeks off or something? Ass, ass, in. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop it. Winter beast, it must be seen to be believed. Freaky Fairly. Look out, he'll show you his penis. I see this stupid little Canadian logo on the bottom, 13 plus. That's probably fucking for fucking French Canada. Quit watching our movies! Group on. <laughs> Tara Reed in. Desperate. <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> Chupacabra versus the Elmo. I wanna watch that. I'm sure it's shitty, but I wanna watch it. Attack of the Beast Creatures! Fuck you. <laughs> Rats. <laughs> My jeez. <laughs> Hobgoblins. Hobogoblins. Goth. How pathetic. <laughs> Demon Wind. Huh? Terrorize. One of the worst covers I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> Andre 3000. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, does this ever end? Oh God. <laughs> da Darna Zuri. Frank Zagarino, look, it's Frank Zagarino. Real evil. The evil is real. Taco Bell presents <laughs> Vampire Hunter Hank. <laughs> Psycho Pike. Shark Exorcist. Destroyer. And Anthony Perkins. Oh, Edge of Sanity. Hey, it's Kathy's Curse on Blu ray. Vampire Assassin. 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 Are we ever gonna get a widescreen? Vampire Assassin. Nobody wanted this copy. Vampire Assassin. 1499. Vampire Assassin. Vampire Assassin. 
Rated PG. Vampire Assassin. Vampire Assassin. Vampire Assassin. Vampire Assassin. How many copies of this do we have? Vampire Assassin. Ooh. Vampire Assassin. Vampire Assassin. Vampire Assassin. Uh, I think this is Vampire Assassin again. Another Vampire Assassin. Vampire Assassin? Oh, oh, oh. they so stepped on this one. Vampire Assassin. And lastly, Booty Call. Avengers Endgame. Was it good? Yes. Was it great? Eh. Was it as good as Infinity War? Nope. Was it a satisfying conclusion to the 10 years of Marvel movies? Sure. Most of the, the standard, just like the standalone movies, you're like, they're all basically a variation on the same story. Right. So it's nice with this one where it's like, I legitimately have no idea where it's gonna go. But the first act is wallowing in misery, which I enjoyed. Um, of course you did. <laughs> Speaking of time travel, I'd be remiss in my duties if I didn't bring up Star Trek. <laughs> And the name of this final episode of Star Trek Voyager? Endgame? Endgame. Is it actually? That's pretty fucking amazing. Jay, am I suggesting this was plagiarized <laughs> by the Duffer Brothers? <laughs> the, I mean, the Duffer Brothers. I mean, uh, I mean, the writers of Star Trek Discovery? Uh, I mean, the Russo Brothers? Wait, did you mention Star Trek Discovery? a tacked on completely pointless cameo from a character that they just shoved in there for no reason. And then she's like, I gotta go, bye. She had to go and try to remove all those press junket videos of her off YouTube. <laughs> oh my God, I look like such a And then we have a Poochie went back to his home planet moment. Yes. I have to go now. My planet needs me. What? Yeah. What? We can't go back to or whatever, whatever. <laughs> Infinity War is like, it's that movie is like a miracle that that works so well. Infinity War is tight. Yeah, this this movie is, it's. Now, how about we stay home and Netflix and chill? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, all good things, as yes, they say. Yes. Which was the title of the final episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Look at that. Yeah. In the last episode of Star Trek Enterprise, you know what that was called? Thanos! <laughs> so that's a nice way to, re it's, like, it's, like the, it's like the final episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Our new villain in, Cap in the Avengers, New Avengers, that's what they'll call it, the New Avengers, uh, is Wizrow. <laughs> I will turn your earlobes into grapefruits. <laughs> oh no, Wizro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we defeated Wizro. Hey, the new Spider-Man movie's out. Hey, the, oh, that's great. Yeah. So it's time to hang up our Marvel hats and put on our Star Wars hats as we watch beloved franchises <laughs> go down in flames. <laughs> what camera's mine? Oh, the middle one. Uh <laughs> we got four cameras. I don't know what I'm looking at. You know what's weird? Is when we have less people, we have more cameras. Oh, my tire! <laughs> I don't understand this. Do you, Ma? <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing that's made sense. That line. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? All I did was integrate the artificial intelligence system with the internal logic unit. That's all she did. It's like that movie Baby's Day Out. <laughs> Have you ever seen the film Baby's Day Out? <laughs> Except instead of a baby, we have a monster truck. Yeah. Oh, God. All these people are just oh, horrifying. God. Oh, my God. Is she like 12? <laughs> I thought it was a child. Oh <laughs> the, the child started smoking. There's, there's one guy who we thought was, was dressed as a werewolf monster, <laughs> but it turns out that was just his face. <laughs>
Uh, Twister, the monster truck, uh, is sentient and can talk. <laughs> makes me embarrassed to be in Wisconsin. This makes me embarrassed to be a human. Bill Romaine, who made the <laughs> giant spider in it. What? Romaine. Romaine, whatever. Bill Romaine. What are many Bill Let Romaine? us do another take. <laughs> It might have been real dynamite you were laughing at, that fake prop, Rich. <laughs> oh, God, that's disturbing. <laughs> that's a very disturbing thought because it's so plausible. <laughs> why get a fake, why make, take all that time to make a fake prop when you can just pile up a bunch of dynamite? All right, we're gonna put all this dynamite next to you for the scene and then get that, get that light on the dynamite, that bright, <laughs> that bright spotlight, put it right. <laughs> the director's smoking. <laughs> and blew up the whole town. Every person set every person on fire in the, in the whole audience, for real. All of them just blowing up and flying through the air. You said go watch Under the Silver Lake. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I rented it on Amazon and I was like, this looks like the end of Grease when the credits roll. Like the VHS version of Grease? Yes. When uh, you know you have a movie in widescreen or uh, uh, anamorphic aspect ratio, the two thirty-five to one aspect right. ratio, and then a movie that uh, that used to be in the two two three five to one aspect ratio on a four by three television with credits, right? That that span the screen, mm -hmm. they would squish it so that everyone could read the qu credits. So when uh, when John Travolta and, and Olivia Newton-John start dancing, we go together. This is like such a specific down, 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 down. example. This was burning your brain. Head. I always think of the uh, the elevator scene in Ghostbusters. This particular movie was was squished. I think there might be a DVD release, but there's absolutely there's no like Blu-ray. How is there just a DVD release? Because it's cheaper. cheaper. It's cheaper to put out why a DVD. Why even release it that's on why DVD there's, at all? There's a lot of stuff uh, that you can find at like Walmart that's like oh. DVD only. It's usually like cheapo horror movies. Um, I can see the market for it now. Yeah. yeah. This movie's dumb as shit. It's boring as fuck. You know, I, uh, I, I stopped it halfway through and I finished my Domino's pizza in silence. <laughs> I was so mad. And normally when Jay recommends a movie to me, there's like a 1% chance I'll actually like it. I'm a narrative guy. I like structure. I, I like my twists and turns, but I like to very clearly understand what's happening in a movie. You're more of a sensory guy. You like, uh, this has a certain feeling to it. And for once, I, I sort of flip-flopped, and I felt like there were lots of things in this movie that I just didn't understand, and there was lots of it I did, and I got the overall gist of it. I can, I can see how a lay person would just be like angry at this movie, um, but I, I really loved the style of it and kind of like the overall message behind it. There's like uh, movie auditions in some like filthy garage. Oh yeah, and There's yeah. like an old fat guy, <laughs> it's and it's like a cigar, and, it's, and there's like girls and they're all dressed the same. They were probably told how to dress, wear this short like mini skirt and, and wear this particular outfit and they're walking like zombies. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess that's why the movie's description, it's like under the silver lake, drama, comedy, action, Horror. It's everything. <laughs> the question mark, question mark. This is a movie about Hollywood in a way that isn't, you've seen plenty of movies about Hollywood or that take place in Hollywood, but one that kind of uh, gets to this sort of like, ooh, it's pretty disgusting. It's, it's not, it's, it's no La La Land. <laughs> it's, it's the anti-La La Land. Like the, the Florida La Project, La right? Yeah, yeah. A little bit, where the, the, it's in the shadow of Disney World, where mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, we, we all like, this thing exists, and it's, it's impacted all of our lives in some way, but we don't really interact with it, it's just there. Yeah. This monolith of, <laughs> of awful. Um, I don't know, I just get excited to see something that feels so like different and unique and ambitious, uh, especially these days, where it's like, it's a shame that, you know, this just got like dumped and nobody's talking about it. You can also guarantee we're never gonna talk about the Sonic the Hedgehog movie when that comes out. Uh, meow? I could give two fucks. <laughs> Whoever cut that trailer was like self-sabotaging the movie. <laughs> it's so bad. I mean, you do look at like the movies coming out now and you're like, if that's what people are, can, are used to seeing, what they've kind of become conditioned to, then yeah. 
something like this doesn't stand a chance. It's worth it. It's not just like weird for the sake of weird or anything. It's a, it's an actually yes. engaging story, I think. It's a little slow, but it, it feels like it's about something and building towards something. A build up, you said, a build up. And not just, oh, this weird thing's happening. Aren't we weird hipsters? Right. This is weird. Lots of weird, <laughs> but it felt like it was building to something. And on top of that, the cherry on top was it had some kind of message or, or, or evoked a feeling. Yeah. Okay, people, we need to discuss how to build a suit of time-traveling power armor so that it could pull the Starship Discovery through a spatial vortex and into the future. I need options and I need them now. I downloaded the plans to the second suit here on my multi-spectrum micro-liquid quantum drive. Here, I'll download the plans into your cerebral cortexes. The whole of this ship is made from titanium. If we could get 500 to 1,000 engineers out there to cut pieces of it off, we could use that. We need about half the ship because it needs to be condensed, but I think we could do it. It'll only take about five minutes. Now this is the power of math. I like science. Science! Fuck yeah! Math! Fuck yeah! I'm sorry, what, could you repeat that? Hell yeah! Of which we know nothing about. I have it right here. I built it while you were talking. What? What? I paid attention in science school. Now this is the power of math. Mike, I just want you to know that ever since I was surgically merged with that Andorian diplomat and resurrected to life by the mycelial network, you took care of my seven adopted cats. And to me, you will always be family. You were there for me. And I just want to say, I love you. I love you too. Well, Mac! Oh, Jesus! What do you think I am, an asshole? It, gangs in New York yeah. is uh, a fantasy film. Yes, it's an alternate <laughs> universe. It's actually quite colorful, like, you know, yeah. when it comes to, like, things like gangs, like the baseball furies. So you yes. can actually follow, like, the, the track that they're on and everything. Well, so you see how far away from home they are. Right. Well, and that's what I wanted to point out is that it's, because the movie is, it's like a gritty urban fantasy, basically. Yeah, it's the Odyssey is what yeah, it is. And so you see that map, it's like in the Lord of the Rings movies when they pull out to the map of Middle Earth. Mm -hmm. It's like, here's the subway map of New York. Ex but exactly. In this world, it's like this, this fantasy kind of, you know, journey mm -hmm. that they go on. Can you dig it? There's only 20,000 cops. You know, the cops are 20,000 deep. We are 60,000. Thousand strong, and we can take over this city one block at a time. I wonder I lost that fucking contest. All right, hot shot. What do you want? All right, detectives, look at me. Uh, here's here's your here's your assignment. Gumshoes. Gum there we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, gumshoes. You know, thanks, voice. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Greek chorus. The Lizzies. The Lizzies. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Definitely no lesbian undertones <laughs> in that name. They ask him to do like one thing of graffiti once in the movie and it looks absolutely terrible. It takes him forever and it looks terrible. Like, yeah. you know, God bless him. Well, well maybe we don't know what the other uh, warriors are capable of artistically. Maybe he was the best. Yeah, maybe he knew how to do that. Maybe he was like, he knew what a W was. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then you see them and they're just wearing like green t shirts. Yeah, yeah. And they're they, like, we're the orphans. We're the orphans. Nobody messes with the orphans. The orphans aren't good enough for your media. And she like tries to fix her hair. Mm -hmm. And Swan like stops her hand, and kind of like, nah, you don't look pretty for the, yeah, yeah fuck these guys. Look at me up. I was like, that's actually the closest thing to touching that yeah. you actually kind of get well, in the movie. Well, and then one of them drops a corsage or something, right? Yeah, and, and, he, and he, yeah, he gives it to her. What's this for? I just hate seeing anything go to waste. We're gonna hang out here. Yeah. Think these girls want to party. Yeah, exactly. No. Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Vermin. <laughs> He's the one who plays Windows in, in, in The Thing. Oh my God! There's no mime gang, I'm not yeah, into it. Yeah, I don't, don't want it. But I know his name is Cleon because uh, my brother named his cat Cleon. Oh. So I have a Cleon in my extended family. <laughs> just how many Cleons are in your family? I don't know a single Cleon. Uh, I know yeah. plenty of vermin though. It just like, it's like instant atmosphere. All you have to do is film like a street corner in New yeah. York from that era. And yeah. I can tell you're a true Warriors fan. 
So I'm gonna give you your own colors, bro. Oh my God. Man. Yeah. Here you go. Oh. You are now officially a warrior. Well, hey, Mike. Macaulay Culkin, what are you doing back? What do you mean? I, I live here now. What? Oh, but that's where Rich sleeps. Did you kick him out? No, he's, he's the big spoon. Orgasmic birth, the best kept secret. It's is a it, crash test dummy. I think it's a blowjob crash test yeah, dummy. Yes, it is. It's, it's one of those. So this video is called... <laughs> Help your child become potty poo. What? Wow, potty pro. Potty poo. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I almost fell over. <laughs> it's constantly cold here. And don't forget, whatever you land on, it's your fault. It's also not expensive to go to clothes free clubs. It's even free of charge at public beaches. Mom, good news, I got an acting job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trapped in this denim prison. <laughs> oh, fuck, Rich. Look what you've done. Turn, turn up the volume. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> 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 what? You can experience it, and your body is. Sick. <laughs> 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 Camera. That guy is somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> the wheel. Oh my God. Tom? No, I got brains in my face. Can someone please Dude. get me a nap? Yeah. <laughs> you want a wet wipe? We can't, that's evidence. <laughs> Rich is actually naked right now. He just has embarrassing clothes painted on him. <laughs> See, this is what I knew was gonna happen. These videos, there's nothing we can fucking talk about. Look. So I knew Mike was just gonna make fun of me. <laughs> Naturism. You fucking fraud! The perverted guys started this as a scam. They thought it was all gonna be ladies like that one they clearly hired to do oh, the yeah. intro. Yeah. But instead they got like the grannies. <laughs> and that's the only reason you don't see erections. <laughs> the resort was open one year and then they closed after they realized this wasn't working. Yeah. Okay. I know I was an investor. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you dork. What would the naked bat boy's genitals look like? <laughs> Can somebody Google bat genitals? Oh, Jesus! Why would I do that? <laughs> Guano, you can eat that bat feces, right? Guano? Or is it poison? <laughs> it's, it's one of the, it's it's one one of the, the other. other. <laughs> you can eat it or you can But what is the like, point? Look at all these the disgusting point? balls. Yeah, but I think that, like, I think that was their intention. You want to you wanna have your baby on a nasty deck? Yeah. Um, <laughs> In a scummy, like, field, <laughs> covered with dirt, yeah. bent over a box. Because birth is sexual. <laughs> Looks like a cult leader. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure all of my wives yeah. have work as <laughs> 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 Looked at nude people with Macaulay Culkin. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Your fucking bucket list. <laughs> there wasn't a lot to like make fun of. Yeah, we made some jokes early on. There and were then very few like, hostage um, situations. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a single edged weapon in yeah. sight. The yeah, baby came out with a little gun. <laughs> OJ wine packs. <laughs> 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 your male partner rubs your hips and that gets you off while you're squirting your baby out in a nasty deck. <laughs> <laughs> we could have put on silver foxes. We could have, but that's, we'll save that for another day. Frank Stallone's mother exercising. <laughs> I mean. Why would you go to Frank Stallone and not Sylvester Stallone? They're both his mother. <laughs> They're both, what? <laughs> She's both <laughs> their mother. She birthed both of them on a nasty porch. <laughs> Yeah, I can tell. Hmm. I also see he's a puppet. <laughs> he's some kind of sex weirdo. <laughs> do, it, do, it, do, it, do it, do it, kill it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. But, uh, yeah. oh, yes! Oh! Show it! Show it! Oh! oh! It's a puppet! 
it. Problem with this safety video is that it's aimed for adults yeah. who work in a fucking mine and it and it's framed like a children's safety video. It's for minors, not minors. I oh. am. What, what if orgasmic birth was just called nasty porch? <laughs> <laughs> Have your baby on a nasty porch. Do you want a kiddie pool to have your baby in on your nasty porch? That costs extra. Hey, what are you guys doing over here? Playing with snakes. Playing with snakes. <laughs> what does it look like? It's snakes taunting my puppet friend with snake. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think we're doing? There's yeah. an art to this, and they, 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 they had none of it. God. Ow! 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 Up until Rich was 18, he had he had a, a childhood friend named Corky that his nano bought him. And when I met Rich in high school, I said, Rich, we're gonna make videos where you beat up this doll. Um, and he's like, we have to be very gentle with it. Remember he said, we have to be very gentle with it at first. Oh wow, that changed. Cause my nana bought it for me. It made me feel like I'm, I'm now shocked <laughs> that this is, People are actually gonna see this shit that we did when we were in high school just fucking around. Jack fucking nailed it! Yeah! God bless Jack. Here he comes. Get, get, oh. Take a bow. Yeah. Yeah. Take a bow. <laughs> Come in. Whoa, Jesus. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> he just backs out. <laughs> this is between all you white people. <laughs> Here's the problem with us. For one, Surviving Edge weapons, lots of like, they throw lots of like legit information. Like this is what you do, here are the acronyms, and this is how you handle yeah. this situation. And plus, stabbings. Hello? Oh shit. Oh, I dropped the phone. Oh. 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 And then we get the shootings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're just about act safety. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you want that instant gratification of a knife attack. What yes. Looking right at you. Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! Shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot him! Oh god! It's the horror movie streak. Shoot him! Oh. That was Jay! Where's Jay? Jay! Oh, Jay! Jay! And, they, and then they had money left over and they were bored, and they said, fuck it, yeah. Frankenstein! <laughs> That's the kind of quality I expect from Caliber yeah. Press. Mm -hmm. Oh, take the clothes off. Oh, no. Oh, God. Uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> Consider faking a cough or a sneeze as an excuse to move in. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Your only viable option may be Asgasms is an entirely different video. <laughs> Women... I don't want to know what that means. Okay, today we're going to break with tradition. And instead of destroying a tape, we are going to correct a past mistake and put creating Rem Lazar in the Hall of Fame. Hold it right there, mister. What? It's me, Mushu, your old friend. I'm the guardian of the best of the worst Hall of Fame shelf. All decisions are passed through me. Oh, 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 you think so? Well, I'm Rich Motherfucking Evans, cocksucker. And I say we put creating Rim Lazar on the shelf. What are you gonna do about it? I say we settle this the old fashioned way. A fight to the death. And let's take it back to where it all started. In space. Okay, now here are the rules. Hey, what are you doing? Ow, oh, my face! Oh. Ow! Ah. Oh, I think we broke my arm. I, I can't feel my legs. Hey. Ah. I just want to talk. Oh, no. Ow! Ow! What are you doing? Stop it! Eric, you want this? You want the Ellie? You want it? Ow! Ow! Oh! Ow! Ow! Oh! Oh God! Oh! Oh God! Why? Oh God! Ow! Ow! Oh, fuck!
my fucking eye! Oh god, not the baseball bat. That's supposed to only be used for baseball. Ah! Ay, 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 why aren't they wearing their glasses? They'll put out an eye, and that's not a lie. They may be dummies, not asses. Okay, switch. 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 Okay, let's see what's going on on the internet today. I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> um, I, and I You're don't. You're going to, though. What's that? You're going to. I don't want to. Uh, no, because it's our coverage. Uh, Haley's got a lot of really good interviews. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, fun. first of all, first of all, I don't want you to do that on the air. You can call me <laughs> after. So, you know what? So, then someone else hosts the show today. Someone else hosts the show today. You get, you have, it's the second time you've done this. The first time you've done this, you burst in the door. Okay. But you're not the producer of it. and I am actually. I am actually. I, 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 yes, I am. I'm actually. That was the deal I made with Fernandez. I'm also. Actually, uh, no, just the same way you didn't know. The same way you didn't. The same way you didn't know that I was the fucking head of development at one point, a head of content. Where you're like, oh, I think you're just head of development. I walk into to Fernandez. I can you clear it up. Content and development. To which now is not the case. You are, and I get it. But I, first of all, if you want to do this on the air, we do it on the air. But I am not, but I am absolutely not talking about it today. You can have Rope host it. How about that? I mean, if you don't want to host the show, because, I don't want to. Oh, I'm so sorry you didn't get to go last you act, you act hot headed. You act you hot headed all the time. You, don't you scream and yell at people, content. but you want to do it now. We can do it now. You don't want to. <laughs> that's glorious. That's, that's glorious. Thumbs up. <laughs> and we're back. With us now is 41-year-old construction worker Rich. Hi. It's the new George Foreskin Grill. Why waste all that money on expensive doctors and medical procedures when you can grill it all? Is this safe? Oh my God. No, I'm not drunk. You're drunk. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Finally, the world has opened a VCR Hall of Fame and exhibit in Toledo, Ohio. We weren't fucking invited to it. Don't they know that we've been busting our ass being VCR repairmen for the last eight years? Not to mention, we have one of the few remaining operational VCR repair shops in the fucking world. Don't they know who the fuck we are? If anyone deserves free tickets to a soft opening of the VCR Repair Museum, it's us. Goddamn right. From exhibits to the very first VCR built by Aberdeen Schmeckeldorf in 1948. Have we done this long enough? Oh, should we talk about Godzilla now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. The bit, I mean, yeah. yeah. I wanted to call them flop busters. <laughs> <laughs> because they they come out and they're like, oh. When, when I saw the last Jedi trailer, I was like, oh, where are they going with this? I'm interested because, you know, it's following up The Force Awakens. What's happening in this? And then this, it's like, <laughs> not being racist. <laughs> that's the way he says it. <laughs> so you could stop your comments right now. AKA Godzilla, King of the Monsters, which is sexist. Because uh, we don't know Godzilla's gender. Godzilla is a male. Well, he could be gender fluid. <laughs> no one can understand. <laughs> In the early scene when Mothra is the larva stage, mm -hmm. and um, there's the guys with the guns, and there's this giant like fucking larva monster, like right, and then they're like, ah, ah, and, and then Vera Farminga yells out from behind the glass window, "Stop it! You're scaring her." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. I want him to turn, bitch, are you for real? Like, just say that, like, uh, like, it's like, it's like as big as this set. I mean, our VCR repair shop. I don't want to sound hypocritical when we say, when we, you know, knock on the Transformers movies and we say, well, people come to see big robots fight each other. That's what they get. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, but with those, you don't even get a coherent story. You That's... don't know what the fuck is happening. Right after watching this, just for comparison's sake, I watched Shin Godzilla from 2016, the Japanese reboot. There hadn't been a Godzilla movie in like over a decade or something. That's a movie that has very little Godzilla, but it also has no protagonist and it's fucking great. Okay, this giant monster just showed up on shore. What do we do? And so we have scenes with like the military, we have scenes with the government, we have scenes with scientists and it's all, all like everybody trying to work together, but there's all this like political red tape. So everything's taking way longer than it should. And that's the whole movie. And it's fucking awesome. I think as like a, like a Star Trek fan, like a TNG fan, you would actually like it. Cause it's very, I, in, I, in rewatching our Godzilla review, from 2014, you're like, I would love to see a movie that's just scientists trying to figure out what to do. And that's the movie. It's uh, the collective horror of the Japanese from being nuked yes. in World War II. Hey, what's this button do? <laughs> oh no, Aberdeen Bumbledore, <laughs> you've unleashed all the monsters. <laughs> Whatever gets the monsters out. <laughs> what movie couldn't use more blue apes? Uh, I loved this movie. Oh my God. Uh, I thought it was the best X-Men movie I've seen since X2. You're lying. I'm not lying. You are, seriously? I am not trolling you. Brian Singer movies. Well, we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> In the pervert era? <laughs> the pervert era. Can we call that the pervert timeline? Sure. <laughs> Shout from the hilltops, James McAvoy. She's got a fucking space alien in here. I have nothing to do with this. With the giant picture of a dead woman on his desk staring at him. The, dying, the giant uh, promotional still. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> trying to do some, ah! <laughs> Put it on the wall over there. Everything in the world is owned by Disney. I don't know what to tell you, Jane. A, a monopoly where, where one company owns every property. People are excited because now the X-Men can be in a Marvel movie. I loved it. <laughs> Played by Katherine Hicks. Oh, from uh, Star Trek IV? Good job. Yeah. Good job. Because you don't have to take your Polaroid film to a developer, or you didn't back in the day. Sure. Everyone would take their, their sick, perverted sex photos on Polaroid or pictures of the, their murder victims. So Polaroids are creepy, hence they're more likely to be haunted. That's why that's a good concept for one of those like terrible movies that go in movie theaters. <laughs> um, if the doll was pure from the get-go and saw that kids today were just addicted to their devices and violent video games and movies and they were just awful, like uh, disassociated people who, who just suck. Um, <laughs> and he learned from watching their behaviors. Sure. And every time they would show it, he'd go. And he just starts gushing blood all over a small child and it just keeps cutting back to her screaming. It's like a, like a Freddy got finger gag. I know your secret kink, you <laughs> fucking weirdo. Because <laughs> you were the only one laughing in the theater. I was, I was, oh, that's God awful, it's horrific. Oh, that child say, is covered with blood and just, ah! <laughs> There's always one elderly man whenever we go see any of these movies. And I always wonder how they ended up there. What life choices they made that brought them to child's play at 11 in the morning. But uh, <laughs> Did you watch Happy Death Day 2? I did, I enjoyed it. It was, it was a charming little romp. <laughs> However, I thought of a title for Happy Death Day 3. Oh. Because it's Happy Death Day 2, you. you yeah, yeah. And uh, so I thought they should definitely call the third one Happy Death Day 3, subtitle, and many more. Oh, that's good. Because that's the end of the happy birthdays. And many more. That's pretty funny, huh? Blumhouse. <laughs> Mike will accept his check now. I just want 50 cents. I just want a check from Blumhouse for 50 cents. Okay. So I just hang it up on the wall. All right. That's it. Then I can say I'm a professional title maker. <laughs> title giver. <laughs> so, Jay, would you recommend... What did we watch? <laughs> Toy Story 4? I was entertained. So was that elderly man. <laughs> was he? He went to go to the bathroom during the climax of the film. <laughs> That's where you're supposed to be like glued to your seat. And he's uh, just like, I'm gonna go piss. I'm just, just trying to kill 90 minutes. Just passing the time. <laughs> just passing the time until I die. They just leave. <laughs> and they leave in the most loud and obtrusive <laughs> and distracting manner. They like, get up and they check their seat. <laughs> Maybell, do you want to bring the popcorn? <laughs> and they got their walkers and they, uh, they slowly like make their way. And 
It takes like 10 minutes and you're just like, get out. <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> mm.